Well, Kingdom Hearts may be completed, but there is still much Kingdom Hearts ahead of us, so uh, let's get going, huh? And welcome, everybody. Welcome to Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. My name is Dan, and if you uh, have not joined us previously, this is a series called Story Mode, where we do a sort of accelerated playthrough of games, uh, focusing mostly on their story elements. And uh, we've already completed Kingdom Hearts 1. That was a lot of fun. Uh, now it is time to move on to the next one, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, or Re-Chain of Memories, I guess. This is the... Uh, 3D version. Well, you know what? We'll talk about it later. Let's start a new game! And, uh, I'm gonna just move it to beginner mode because this... we'll get into that later, too. Uh, yes, fine, and good. All right, let's start! So, for those of you not in the know, uh, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories is sort of a spin-off. You know what? It's complicated. Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories was originally released on the Game Boy Advance, uh, between Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. And, uh, for a lot of people, they saw that, oh, this other Kingdom Hearts game is coming out on this handheld console. It must be a spin-off. If I don't already have this handheld, I probably don't have to pick this up and play it. I'll just play Kingdom Hearts 2 later. Little did we all know at the time that Kingdom Hearts doesn't really do spin-offs in the strictest sense of the word. If you were to just play Kingdom Hearts 1 and Kingdom Hearts 2 and Kingdom Hearts 3, the main numbered entries in the series, you might understandably expect that you would have all of the important story information and be able to follow everything that is happening. That would be an understandable thing to think, but unfortunately, every single Kingdom Hearts entry is somewhat important to understanding the story. It's a bit obnoxious that way. So for those of us who did jump right to Kingdom Hearts 2 and start playing, we were instantly very confused, because apparently we had missed a lot. A lot that happened in this game for the Game Boy Advance. That Game Boy Advance game was later re-released on the PlayStation 2 with full 3D graphics and voice acting and everything. And that's the version that's been added to all of these compilations that came later. So that is what we're going to be playing now. And what we have been watching, as you can tell already, is kind of a quick recap of a lot of the big events that happened in the game we just finished. This is where we are left off. Kyrie back on Destiny Islands. Alone, apparently. Sora lost out in the middle of nowhere. Pretty much exactly where we left off. Along the road ahead lies something you need. However, in order to claim it, you must lose something that is dear to you.
Welcome back to Kingdom Hearts, everyone. It only gets weirder from here. Did they just up-res the GBA renders or something? This feels weirdly low resolution. Or artifacted. I don't know. The character animation really stepped up a lot from the first game. Granted, this PS2 version did come out well after Kingdom Hearts 2 had. Hey, you think it's okay to barge in? But we gotta do it if we're gonna find the king. The king? King Mickey's here? Something just told me he'd be here, okay? Really? Cause now that you mention it, I was kinda thinking the same thing. Seriously? Me too. One look at this castle, and I just knew. Our very best friends. They're here. <laughs> yup. Guess great minds think alike. Wait, hey, hold on. It can't be just a coincidence. Oh no, Kimmy. You don't mean that. Yep, I had it too. Mm-hmm. I had the exact same feeling. Gorge! Maybe it's contagious! No, no! Something screwy! We gotta go take a look! All right. Where, where are you going? That way. To the door. <laughs> are you scared? Ah, oh, don't be ridiculous! Come on, let's go, Goofy! Hey, fellers, uh, shouldn't we shut the door behind us before we go? Sora! Hello. That's it. Who are you? Well, hi, Wes. Oh, yeah? I'll try some magic. Sega! Come on, Sega! Sega! Come on, Sega! Fire! Why is it not working? I should think it's obvious. The moment you set foot in this castle, you forgot every spell and every ability you ever knew. In this place, to find is to lose, and to lose is to find. That is the way in Castle Oblivion. Castle Oblivion? Here you will meet people that you have known in the past, and you will meet people you miss. I miss? Riku! You mean Riku's here? If what you want is to find him. <laughs> What'd you do? I merely sampled your memories. And from them, I made this. To reunite with those you hold dear. What's this? A card? It is a promise for the reunion you seek. Hold the card to open the door, and beyond it a new world. Proceed, Sora. To lose and claim anew, or 
to claim anew, only to lose. Come on, let's go. Okay, so a few things. One, you have probably noticed that Sora's voice is sounding a good bit deeper. Uh, that is because between the release of Kingdom Hearts 1 and the PS2 remake of this GBA game, uh, Haley Joel Osment's voice changed. <laughs> Honestly, a lot of the actors got older, so uh, I think his voice has changed by Kingdom Hearts 2 as well, and it felt more fitting then because Sora was... Sora looks a lot older starting as, as of Kingdom Hearts 2. Uh, it, but yeah, just, you know, <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, okay. The other thing is that this game changes up the mechanics a lot, and not necessarily for the better. <laughs> I think there's a reason they never really came back to this uh, gameplay idea. Uh, okay, so... We are choosing a world card. <laughs> this will make more sense later. This can't be right. We're in Traverse Town. What you see isn't real. This town is an illusion created by your memories ingrained in that card. My memories? Forget about that, Sora. We lost Donald and Goofy! Donald? Goofy? Guys, where are you? What did you do with them? They are at the mercy of the cards now. Master the cards, and their strength will be yours again. Yep, here we go. The laws of this castle require that your friends be transformed into cards. If you value your friends, you won't fail to pick them up. Alrighty, here we go. Cards you pick up are added to the top of your stack. Use them, and your friends will come to your aid. The cards you use vanish, but they will reappear to aid you time and again. Cards are the hearts of your friends. Everything in this castle is ruled by cards. <sighs> yes, it is. Whether an enemy or a door confronts you, cards are the only way to proceed. But you mustn't forget your own strength. Uh, so we jump, we can dodge roll. At least we still got that. First, think for yourself. Move, then use the cards. Yeah. <sighs> so this is how combat works in Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. <laughs> you now know how to use your strength, but it would be of no use if you lose sight of your opponent. I wonder if you can catch me. Good. Every move you make causes a card to disappear. If you use up all your cards, you'll be unable to act. But there is a solution. Keep using cards until you run out, and I'll show you. So yeah, this is how combat works in Chain of Memories. You build a deck of cards that are your combat abilities, and you use them in combat, and the numbers on them and the specific kinds of cards are important. There's actually a lot of interesting complexity to this, but I do... I'm gonna say it up front. I don't think this card deck mechanic thing blends well to action RPG combat. Like, I think it is difficult to 
track all of this in your head while also trying to dodge enemies and all other kinds of nonsense. Y you'll see as we get further into it. You have no more cards, and without them, no power. If you want that power back, you must focus. Bid the cards return to you, and they will. All right. Quickly select reload card with the up button and hold X to reload cards. There we go. The strength of your heart brought back the lost cards. You can recall spent cards at any time. You need only wish it. But each time you do, the cards will take longer to return. The cards are by no means unlimited. Use them wisely. Anticipate the flow of battle. And choose the most effective cards. You may use any card in your deck. Okay, you can cycle through them if you want. The four card types you use in battle are grouped into two wider categories. The first category includes attack cards, magic cards, and item cards. The second category consists of entirely of enemy cards. To use cards from a different category... Hmm, okay. Just... Cards will empower you whether you are attacking or defending. But it is up to you to decide when to attack and when to defend. Do not forget that. You two all right? Where have you been? You tell us. When you opened the door, we saw a strange light. And the rest is just... blank. It was kind of easy to forget that we had Jiminy along with us for the entirety of Kingdom Hearts 1. <laughs> he didn't show up much. Gee, that doesn't help. Try to remember what happened. I have to keep my journal up to date. Uh, hey Donald, where'd I get the new clothes? <laughs> what? Me too, Goofy! Somebody's been messing with our clothes! Could it be the cards again? That is for you to ponder. Master the cards and make your way through the castle. But from here, you walk alone. Alone? We can't let Sora go alone. Yeah, Sora can't do anything without our help. Thanks a lot, Donald. You sure you'll be okay? Of course. You want me to go alone? Fine, I can take care of myself. You know, at least Sora's speaking voice is now a little closer to mine. <laughs> I guess that's a little silver lining there. Oomph, the hero speaks boldly. Go then. The rest of Castle Oblivion awaits. Walk the avenues of latent memory, and you shall meet someone dear to you. I've got a bad feeling about this. Relax, Jiminy. I'm ready for any tricks he's got up his sleeve. How hard can it be to figure out these cards? Oh, Sora. <laughs> All I gotta do is use this one in front of that door over there. Key of Beginnings. Well... Back in Traverse Town, sort of. Oh, let's see, you can perform the following actions in the field. Move, look around, face forward, okay, the same... Okay, swing keyblade, jump, dodge roll. Striking objects in the field with your keyblade yields various results. Try striking the barrel. Okay. Ooh, a card. There is something you must do in this room. Okay. Marked objects can be lifted and thrown. Approach and press triangle to lift. Gotta lift. Here we go. Yes. Touching a Heartless on the field starts a battle, but you can strike the Heartless first to gain the upper hand. Uh, throw. I don't think that did anything. I'm just going to hit him if that sounds good to you. There we go. 
So yeah, battles are now fought on a separate screen from the uh, kind of wandering around map screen. Sort of a uh, relic of the GBA original. Ooh, new card. Tranquil Darkness. To open doors in the field, press triangle in front of the door. Will do. Actually, before... Ooh, that map screen up there in the top corner is really cool looking, actually. I love the design of that. That is gorgeous. I love it. Uh, anyway, before I forget, um, first, let me change the camera. I can't. Bummer. Uh, but also before I forget, the original GBA release of this game was actually not in 3D at all. It was a 2D pixel art uh, game, and it was actually quite pretty. Like, the pixel art in that game was really nice. Carrie, can you find, like, a video clip to put up of what the game looked like originally? It's kind of a shame that we, uh, actually, like, couldn't still preserve that original look and version of the game. Like, I love getting these full 3D cutscenes with voice acting and everything. The original game didn't have voice acting at all, but, uh, it's, uh, it's a shame losing that really pretty pixel art. Anyhow, let's see how many other things I can break in this space. Are there more cards? So in the kind of map screen, you're wandering around these, uh, spaces, which are themed after, uh, the various worlds we visited before. And you can break stuff and start fights and get into battles. And we're just going to be trying to make our way through this here castle oblivion. So, uh, next room. To proceed to the next room, you need a map card. Map cards are used to synthesize new unexplored rooms. First, select the map card you want to use. Okay. Let's see, the Tranquil Darkness card is a room where only a few Heartless appear. Okay. The Moment's Reprieve card is a room where you can save your progress. There will be no Heartless there. And the Key of Beginnings is a room where untold stories unfold. So I guess it brings us to, like, the next little story scene. This is the other interesting mechanic of this game. You're exploring kind of floor to floor of this castle, but each new room you enter is generated based on the card you choose which is kind of interesting. But it does also mean that each one of these worlds and floors we go to is not custom designed necessarily. It's a whole bunch of kind of pre-generated uh, stock rooms and spaces that we create. So they all kind of feel samey and similar. Hey, you'll see what I mean. Let's go to the uh, Key of Beginnings room. Let's go to the Moments Reprieve room. The number you see in the middle of the screen is the criterion for opening the door. Ah, uh, so I have to have a one or higher in order to uh, use this. Interesting. The criterion displayed now means that the door will open with a value of one or greater. You need to pick a card that meets this criterion. Cards have marked values from zero to nine. Zero cards are special cards which meet most criteria. The card without a marked value is a key card. Key cards are only used at special doors. There's a lot of neat ideas in this game, I will say that. Like, some really clever design ideas that just in execution don't work out as... don't turn out as strong a product. The swirling crystal in front of you, of you or Sora, is called a save point. Stand near it and press triangle to open the save menu. I would love to. See, we've generated a new room that is still sort of Traverse Town. What are the red? Moogle P. Okay, <laughs> I do not remember what that is. Let's save. And let's break a barrel. What are the Moogle P? That might just be the currency here. I don't know if you get money. You might just get these Moogle P things. And that's how you, like, buy cards and gear and stuff. But okay, next door. Alright, so we need a two or higher. Uh, 
You know what? Let's um let's do let's do the Heartless Room first. Why not? Ooh. Yeah, I do like the visual look of a lot of these. Like, even though, as you can kind of tell, these spaces we're in are kind of boxy and a little generic, and uh, that's going to stay the same <laughs> throughout this uh, entire game, really. But it is kind of neat seeing them skinned to look like different, uh, different worlds we've been to. I do love that flashy transition screen. Ooh, who have we got? Donald, get in here. Donald, no, Donald. Don Sorry, still learning the controls. Donald! So you're seeing something uh, up here on screen, that text that says card break. Uh. One of the mechanics they've not really explained to us yet is that uh, if both I and an enemy try to use an attack on each other at the same time, whoever's card has the higher number wins. So I think he just tried to use... I didn't see what number he tried to use, but I won. Oh, and I got a new card. Alchemic Waking. Hmm. Oh, I have leveled up, and I get to choose a bonus. I forgot that you got to do this. So, one option, I can raise my HP... Another option is I can raise my CP, which is, I think, card points. I think that's, like, the limitation on how many cards I can have in my deck. Uh, and the other one is Slate. Learn a new Slate. Um, let's, let's go ahead and do that, even though we've not really learned what Slates are yet, technically. I have learned Sliding Dash. Slide toward distant targets for a close-range attack. Three attack cards of the same type, with a total value between 10 and 15, will result in this slate. It's it's a little bit complicated, and it's another reason why playing this game is <laughs> a little bit more complicated than it probably should be. But, again, we'll get into it. And I'm just going to tell you right now, uh, with Chain of Memories, with our original Kingdom Hearts playthrough, uh, we fast-forwarded and skipped a lot of stuff. Like, we, every, anytime the, uh, footage was just kind of getting boring, where I was just in a bunch of repetitive fights or wandering through areas we'd already seen before with no new interesting story or, uh, details to see, we always, uh, would just skip ahead. I think we're gonna be skipping ahead a lot more in this game, because in between the story bits, is just a whole lot of this wandering around generic spaces, getting into fights, picking up cards, and just trying to kind of explore room to room. It's just, there's not a lot happens in between the story moments, and there's a whole lot of fluff. That's also why I set the difficulty to easy, because there's... This game's actually surprisingly long, and uh, the fights aren't super interesting. <laughs> and also, this game is <laughs> very breakable. You can break this game over your knee with certain slates <laughs> learned later in the game, and we are absolutely going to be doing that. So, okay, this time I can raise HP, which I don't think I need because I'm not getting hit much. Let's go ahead and raise our CP. And uh, let's try to get to the next room already. Oh, wait, sorry, wrong button. There we go. Oh, my bad, one more fight. Up, oh, see that time, uh, the heartless <laughs> threw up a two, and uh, I tried, or it threw up a four, and I tried to counter with a two, and my attack bounced because it was a uh, not a high enough value. But one uh, mechanic that I don't think they've taught us yet, or if they did, I've already forgotten, is that uh, <laughs> my stuff is just bouncing off their attacks. Goofy, get in here, maybe. Help me out, huh? Goofy. Is that if you have a card with a zero, zero beats pretty much anything. It, it can counter pretty much anything, that is to say. Come on. There we go. 
Ugh, I do not love the combat system in this game. Creative as it is, I do not love it. Okie dokie. Can I break this? Yay, um, yay? I don't know what the question mark look was for, but... Oh, good, yes, I can get into the menu and I can change to my, uh, preferred setting. Wonderful. Okie dokie. Ah, oh, we have a lot of cards to pick from now. Let's go ahead and go to the next story scene if they'll let us. Nope. Just gotta get further in then. All right. In that case, let's actually look at some of the variety uh, of rooms these cards are allowing us to create. Uh, teeming Darkness, a room where many Heartless appear. So we've got like three stars next to the Heartless count over there, so... Uh, lots of Heartless, and also room size of three stars, so it's like a big room with tons of Heartless in it. Uh, this one, a premium room where victory often leads to premium bonuses, uh, two stars for the Heartless and the room size. Uh, Martial Waking, a room where your attack cards are more effective, uh, two stars for both. Alchemic Waking, a room where your item cards are more effective, so fewer Heartless but still a moderate room size. And Stagnant Space, where Heartless move slowly. And there are fewer of them also, it seems. So, like, that's interesting, right? That's kind of cool, this uh, room generating by cards mechanic. It's neat. It doesn't end up being super fun in the long run, but it's neat. Uh, let's see. Well, might as well get this teeming darkness room out of the way. Well, episode one and we're already gonna be skipping ahead. Oh yeah, I forgot, you could go to this map screen, and this actually helps a lot. So now we can see the layout of this floor here. This is where I entered, this is where I set that uh, moment's reprieve room, and this is where I am now. But this, I think, is where I actually need to use that uh, Untold Stories card. So I need to go back to this room and use that card on this door, which I just did not see before. This is useful. Okay, let me head back. And it was right there on my, like, map up in the corner, too, this whole time. I don't know why. I don't know why I didn't notice it. Let me wrap up this battle real quick. In fact, let's try out that, uh, slate here. So if I hit triangle three times, I can store a few cards up there. And that does add up to the sliding dash. So let's use it. There we go. Over time, we are going to find better and better cards, build a stronger deck to work with, and uh, gain access to more and more powerful slates, which are going to be very useful, especially on bosses and the like. There are certain slates in this game that are game-breaking. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and put that out there. And we will be using them. Don't you worry. All right, uh, let's just... I'm up to level five now, so hey. Now, let's go through this door to wrap this episode up. Doors emblazoned with a crown are special doors. You need special cards called key cards to open these doors. But just having the key card's not enough to open the door. You need the key card and one or more additional cards meeting certain criteria. Pick map cards that meet the criteria and you can open the door. Okay, so I need to use the key card, but also one of these other ones to uh, get through the door, I guess. So let's use, uh, I guess let's just use like an easy one or something. Uh, then let's use the one where the heartless move more slowly. Why not? There we go. And there we go. Hmm. Fighting alone is not as easy as I thought. Ah! Don't pop out of nowhere like that. Hey, it's not our fault. We don't know what's going on. Oh. Pluto? Pluto? 
things keep getting stranger. What's Pluto doing here? There's nothing strange about that. We came to Traverse Town with Pluto, didn't we? Did we? No, wait. According to my journal, it was before you met Sora that you came to town with Pluto. Ah, he's right! We were chasing after Pluto, and that's how we ended up in Castle Oblivion. But aren't we in Traverse Town? Well, it's not really Traverse Town. I think the card created this Traverse Town inside Castle Oblivion. Ah, who cares about all that? It's too confusing. Sora, you are my hero. This is why I love Sora so much. He is simple and wonderful, and he does not care about all this complexity. He just cares about his friends and wants to do the right thing. He, honestly, Sora is the only thing that keeps this whole franchise from being so much worse than it is. I love him. I don't know where we are, but let's just keep moving forward defeating Heartless. We'll get somewhere. You better be careful, or it's the Heartless that are going to defeat you. Leon, it's you! What are you doing in Castle Oblivion? Castle Oblivion? What are you talking about? This is Traverse Town. And how do you know my name? Who are you? What? I've never met the likes of you before. Quit playing, Leon. We all fought the Heartless together. You know that. Look, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't even know your names. You don't? Sorry. I can't believe it. How can you have forgotten about us? I feel for you, but you got the wrong guy. It happens all the time. Don't take it so personally, Sora. You do know his name! Now, hold on. Why do I know your name? You think Leon's just kidding around? If he is, it's not funny. Sora's really upset. Who's kidding around, Goofy? You and Donald are the ones who- Hey! I don't get it. Something's wrong with my memory. What is happening here? I don't know, Leon. Maybe Aerith was onto something after all. That was a weird walk. <laughs> she said she sensed some uncanny kind of power. And asked us to look into it. Well, this is as uncanny as it gets. Maybe we should take Sora to see Aerith. Yuffie, you know my name! Yep, looks like you know mine too. You know him? Nope, total stranger, but I definitely know his name. Strange, yes, but convenient. We can skip the introductions. How is it that you can accept the situation so easily? I don't get you. Well, I'm gonna run ahead and fill Aerith in. Leon, you give him the grand tour. See you later. <sighs> Guess it's no use pondering over it. Come on, follow me. But there are Heartless wandering around town. I'd better teach you how to protect yourself in battle. All right, and we are going to be doing this next time. Thank you all so very much for watching. I'm excited to be on to new Kingdom Hearts games, even if they're not as good. Anyway, I uh, hope you have a good rest of your day, and I will see you folks tomorrow. Goodbye. I don't have any magic to cast, just imagine I am. <laughs>